In the last video, we were just looking at how we expect the stars and the gases to rotate in a galaxy. And assuming that we have Keplerian orbits, which is fully expected, then we saw that the velocity should be proportional to 1 over square root of r, which means the graph should look like this. This is velocity of the particles, or the gas, or the stars. And this is the radius outwards from 0 to some far distance. Now, what do we actually see? This is what I'm going to show you here. So what we actually see, so I'm trying to build up a bit of suspense here because, of course, something very strange happens. So what we actually see, I'm really doing a bad job of writing here, but what we actually see, let's say we look at this particular galaxy. This is NGC 3198. In the sort of optical pictures, if you're taking a nice picture of it, it looks like this. It's a nice spiral galaxy spinning around happily. And so what astronomers do, although this looks nice, what we like to do as astronomers is take a picture in a different way. We take the spectrum of it, and from then we can tell sort of how fast different things are moving. So from the center and how fast things are moving over here. Now it turns out then that this is what we really see. So this here is NGC 3198. We actually see this. So this is again velocity in kilometers per second, and this right here is the radius. This is in kiloparsecs. Remember, one parsec equals uh, 3.26 light years. So kiloparsec, these are, these are thousands of light years here. Well, each, each one kiloparsec at least is a thousand light years. Uh, well, actually 3,000. But you can get the idea this is very large distances. Here are the data points. And here are even the error bars to show you sort of how sure we are as astronomers of these different points. You can see the central ones have more sources of error. And that's because they're in the center and it's harder to tell. But look what happens here. This right here, this is the graph that is sort of expected. We expect it to do this. Right? If we had a certain distance, we would expect it to drop off. And yet we see this we see it goes like this. So we see them do this. So this is the big sort of deal. The very fact that these rotation curves are flat, so that's the key thing right here, these look too flat, these points. What this tells us is that when we're looking at a data point here, for example, it's rotating much faster then it should. We would expect it to be going you know, a lot slower at that distance away. And yet it's going way too fast. So these are very, very flat rotation curves. Now what we can work out then is this implies um, that there is much more mass inside that's predicted. And that's because, see, the orbits of these gas and stars, those tell us about the mass within. Maybe I'll write that down. So the orbits or the motion of the stars and gas. Remember, those are the things we can see, the stars and the gas. They tell us about the mass within. Turns out if you go through some calculus stuff, what you can do is you can actually figure out, if you know how this stuff right here rotates, turns out you can tell how the mass is located from here and inside. But the problem is you can't tell what it is from here and outside. So our problem is we're missing data points. I mean, we still expect this thing to drop down. So we can infer then that we don't have enough data points. We can't see things far enough away where they should be going downwards. But what this really tells us is the cool thing now. So what does this really mean? Well, the flat rotation curves, what this really tells us, um, well, they imply that there is a lot more mass in there. Okay, so we're going to say they imply that, um, let's say there's much more mass in a galaxy. Is much more mass in a galaxy than expected. So what this really is telling us this is sort of the first sort of thing that it, it, it tells us, then expect it, right? I mean, we expected it to go sort of down, and in fact, it goes really flat. What we could say is this, though. So the galaxies are spinning much too fast. 
to stay together. Because you see what's happening is, remember every object in the galaxy is affecting and attracting every other object in the galaxy. So every single star in this thing right here is attracting every single other star and they're all sort of going around. Well, the problem is, in order to stay together, they have to have enough mass. You see, it's like they're spinning around a merry-go-round uh, just too fast. They're, they're spinning so fast, they can't stay together. And now, when I saw this right here, when I've learned about these, it made me think of a really, really stupid YouTube video that I saw once. So I'm actually going to show it to you, just a little clip from it. These are really, really stupid, stupid people who are doing this. I don't know them personally, but uh, this is a very, very stupid thing to do. So what they do is they have a little merry-go-round, and what they're doing is in order to make it spin fast, they've gotten someone with a motorcycle to put the back wheel against this. So as they basically uh, press the gas on the motorcycle, it's going to make this thing right here spin really fast. And that's going to sort of be an analogy to what's happening here, right? The fact that these things right here, they're spinning so fast, it shouldn't be able to stay together. Okay, so what's happening is this. They're spinning much too fast to stay together. In theory. Right? So that means they're, they're going so fast, we don't expect them to stay together. We expect, in fact, that the stars, each of the stars and the gas particles, should, because they're spinning so fast, they should do what this guy does, which is fly off. <laughs> that looks really stupid. So what's happening then is this. They're spinning so fast, you know, the, the galaxy should not be stable. Okay, so the actual fact is galaxy should not be stable. It should be sort of ripping itself apart like what just happened. So why isn't it? Or why is it stable? The only thing we can think of is this. This is the conclusion we can make. There must be mass that we can't see because this is the idea is that because it's spinning so fast I mean this is the the fact right the fact is it's spinning much faster than is expected and it's spinning so fast in fact this galaxy should not be able to hold itself together it should be completely like these arms should be completely ripped off and it shouldn't be stable it should be a big giant mess when it's in fact not Right? It's spinning so fast, we expect it to do like what the stupid guy did there and just sort of fly off the merry-go-round. But the very fact that they're able to stay together tells you that there's something keeping them in. And the only thing we know of that does that, attractive-wise, is mass. So there must be mass there that we can't see. This is sort of the, the key piece of evidence. So what do we do? We call this dark matter. Now the reason why we call it, so this is sort of what it implies, it implies what we call dark matter. Now we call it matter because it has sort of regular attractive mass. I mean it has to be something that still attracts things, right, mass that sort of helps keep things together, but it has to be dark because we can't see it. I mean we don't we don't see these objects. So they must be invisible. Now you might think of some sort of really nefarious sort of, ooh, someone's trying to hide or something. But no, it doesn't necessarily have to be. And we're going to talk about that in the next uh, couple of videos. I'm going to show you some more evidence, so some even stronger evidence for dark matter. So I'm just trying to set the stage and show you how we know that it, it, it seems to exist. We don't know exactly what it is, we don't know why it's there, but we do know there is something more than what we actually see because galaxies should not be able to spin so fast and still be stable. There must be lots of mass within this, in fact even uh, also without, turns out. There must be so much mass that we can't actually see. So we call this mass, this sort of missing stuff, well because we can't see it, it's got to be dark and it's regular sort of attractive mass, so we call it dark matter. It turns out, uh, by looking at how this gas right here works, we can actually even infer how this dark matter is uh, located. So even though we don't know what it actually is, we can know where it is. So it turns out through some really cool computer simulations and models, using these data points here, we can actually figure out lots of things about this mysterious stuff. Even though we don't know what it is, we can know pretty well what it does.